Good morning, everyone. My name is Pat Clark, and my co-reader today is Greg Kanupke Co. Welcome to our St. Matthew Parish family. Today we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please turn off your phones and take a moment to enter into silence. Our presider today is our pastor, Father Tom Anastasia, assisted by Deacon Tony Kotraki. Thursday night adult formation is meeting remotely and in person. You're invited for this week's gathering at 7 p.m. on Is It True? Believing, Knowing, and Doubting. See our parish website for more details. It's not too late if you haven't remembered your loved ones in the Mass Remembrance for November. Use the All Souls Day envelopes in the pews and by the exits to submit your loved ones' names. Please note, you are encouraged to place your offertory gifts in one of the three offertory baskets located around the sanctuary. Thank you for your generosity. Please rise now as we begin our celebration together. From darkness and death, God will not leave us to starve. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love, God of In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist. Uh, As for special prayers for a couple of uh, young people who died tragically this week, uh, One was actually last week who died in a boating accident, Rachel Herring at the age of 16, and Ada Smith who died on Tuesday, um, um, election day. And uh, so these tragic deaths uh, have a little something to do with uh, why uh, Chantel's uh, not here, uh, not directly. I won't go into details, but keep Chantel in your prayers. So as a result, a guitar mass here. So we're going to... uh, sing our best. I always get nervous when we start the Mass with rain down, rain down, and then it's not raining outside. So it might be raining by the end of Mass. Who knows? Uh, we'll also pray that the storm that's brewing out there uh, kind of uh, misses us or at least calms down before it gets to us uh, and uh, that we will indeed be protected by the Lord's loving care. As we begin our Mass, as always, we take a, a moment 
to call to mind our sins, our human frailties, our need for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the light shining brightly in the world of darkness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, lift us up when we feel despair and, and, and lost. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us God's everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God, God glory, glory to God, God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. Bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. O God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth be to people of good. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity so that unhindered mind and body alike we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will the children who are to be dismissed for the children's liturgy of the word please come forward for your dismissal and blessing. May the Lord give you his peace as you go forth now to receive God's word. Come back and join us shortly. Lots of blessings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, 
and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and gra graciously appears to them in their ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. Thirsting for you, my God. Oh God, you are my God, and I will always praise you. In the shadow of your wings, I cling to you, and you hold me high. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God. Thirsting for you, my God. Through the day you walk with me, all the night your love surrounds me. To the glory of your name I lift my hands, I sing your praise. My soul is thirsting for my you, soul is Lord. thirsting. Thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for my you. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. Thirsting for you, my God. I will never be afraid, for I will not be abandoned. Even when the road grows long and weary, your love will rescue me. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God. Thirsting for you, my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest, who have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. 
Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left, until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. My heart this day. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. The foolish ones when talking... when. T- talking, taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oils with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, behold, the bridegroom come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there, are not, there is not enough for us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourself. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were readily available went into the red wedding feast with him. Then the doors were locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the doors for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. My sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Good morning. 
May the love and the peace of Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you today. Thank you. My friends, this is a very difficult week to preach. I don't know why, but it is. And then on top of it, this gospel reading is very challenging, at least to me. You know, when I read the gospel, I want the good news. I want positive stuff. But all three of the readings, the Book of Wisdom, which I seem to cling to, and then St. Paul's letter, and then this gospel from Matthew, all talk about the same thing. Be prepared. Be ready. Stay focused. But this gospel has a word in here that just stands out. I read it over and over again. I put the gospel down for a week, and I, and I reflected on it, and I came back to it, and it was still there. It's a powerful word, but it's a word also of the kingdom of God. This word surprises me when I read this gospel passage. It's the word no. No. You see, the bridesmaids knew each, one, each other. They went to trim their lamps. They were prepared. But some of the foolish ones said, no, we don't have enough oil. Give us some of yours. And their response was no. It's kind of shocking. These words don't come from St. Paul or Peter. They come from the mouth of Jesus Christ. He's teaching a story. He's providing them a lesson. No. Aren't we supposed to be a people that follow Christ who says always to love, to share, to care, to serve, to give of yourself? Take the cloak off your back and give it to someone else. When somebody is lying on the side of the road, do not pass them by, but stop and give of your time. It's shocking. But then I realize this is Stewardship Sunday. This is the time that we're supposed to talk about us giving of ourselves freely, without any strings attached, without counting the costs. So I can decrease so the Lord can increase. That is what stewardship is all about. That is what about being a good disciple is all about. You know, you've heard me say it over and over again. This is ordinary time. We're wearing green. Guess what? In two weeks, three weeks, we put the green away. Year A ends. Ordinary time, discipleship time. Discipleship time for what? To grow closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. To grow closer to our personal Savior. To grow closer and be, be stronger Catholic Christians. In our words and our deeds and what we say and what we don't say. And put away our fears and our disappointments. And go forward because we're not in control of anything our Lord and Savior is in control. Amen? Amen? So pick yourselves up, those of you that are down. And those of you that are high, brush, brush yourselves off because a fall could happen anytime. We need to be loving and caring for one another. And not just by our words, but by our deeds and our actions. You know, the bridesmaids shared a history with one another. They all shared a history. They also all knew the bridegroom. And I am sure the foolish ones time and time again took advantage of those that were wise. And finally, they said, enough is enough. We have to stop. We have to say no. Not because we want to get back at them. Because we do it out of love. And every parent in this room knows what I'm talking about when we say no to our children. We don't say that maliciously. We say it because we care about them. We love them. We want them to grow. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes is at the very heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Giving of ourselves to others is what makes us true disciples of Jesus. Laying down our life for one another is the very crux of our salvation. But is precisely because giving and sacrificing are at the heart of the gospel message, because it's at the center, the core of the gospel message. This parable today is so very important. It calls upon wisdom. We heard the first we reading on wisdom. A wisdom to discern one thing from another. 
There is a difference between a yes that helps and a yes that harms. Too many people think and make a decision just with their brain. If one and one does not equal two, I don't want to hear anything about it. Too many people think only of their heart with their heart. I feel, I feel this is the way. I long for this to be the way. Their emotions take over. And they don't think. And together, you must think and you must feel, but you also must pray. Put your prayers, your wants, your desires at the foot of the cross. That is true discernment. Don't be carried away by your logic because God is smarter than all of us. Don't get carried away by your emotions and your feelings alone. Bless you. Put together your thoughts, your feelings, your intellect, and your prayers. Discern. This is the difference between a sacrifice that is redemptive and a sacrifice that is destructive. There is a difference between a no said out of selfishness and a no spoken with wisdom. To be a follower of Jesus Christ, my friends, as we all know, is called to give of ourselves, but not to the hands of those that abuse us, those that will harm us. We are called to recognize their foolish ways, their foolish thoughts. We are continued called to love them, but we are not called to follow. If we are wise, we realize that we have a right and a responsibility to protect ourselves from all harm. God has made us valuable. We are his. Don't throw it away. We have a responsibility to protect ourselves, to preserve our future, and to ensure our joys. The sad truth is that there are people in this world who are foolish, who are selfish, who are very manipulative. The gospel calls us to love them, but it does not call us to believe in everything they say. Jesus asks us to forgive them, but he warns us not to trust them. We are called to be wise persons, people who look at our experience and use our heads, our hearts, and discern what the Spirit of God is telling us. A wise person will know when it is giving out of love, and it's warrant to give to others and what is right and what is wrong and when it is okay to say no. Now, of course, my friends, there are many parables, and you're probably already thinking one step ahead of me, that say, wait a minute, God has a much more flexible attitude. But no one parable collects the whole truth. I could point out passages that show that Christ would be willing to make allowances that his divine mercy overcomes any of our deficiencies, and I thank God for that. This passage, though, of Scripture points out that the parable warns us about presuming too much. The gospel that you just heard. To me, the saddest phrase in the whole gospel. Amen, I, do, I say to you, I do not know you. The doors are locked. Go away. I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake. Be prepared. Be aware. We do not know the hour, the time, or the place God is calling us. It's not 100 years from now. It might be today. It might be tomorrow. It might not be for 10 or 15 but whatever it is, my friends, are you prepared? Are your bags packed? Are you ready to be welcomed into the arms of Jesus? Will you go kicking and scratching and yelling? Each one of us has to stop and pause and think and reflect. This parable, more than any others, and it's close to the end of Matthew's Gospels, this parable reminds us that we know who calls us, calls each of us by name. 
We know what is expected of each one of us, you, you, and me. Knowing these things, the wise person does not live life counting on last-minute negotiations. You know, on my deathbed, Lord, I will ask you for my, all my sins, but until that time, I want to party and live like the devil. That's not what true Christianity is about. Kids, those of you, you have your whole life ahead of you. Learn to know the Savior. Know that he's your friend and he'll be with you always. Open up to him, even when you feel despair, when you're at the end of your rope. Too many kids today take the easy way out. One of the children that we are praying for took their lives this week because they thought there was no light at the end of the tunnel. We don't count on last-minute negotiations. The wise person chooses to courageously live the gospel in their daily lives. Not only today, my friends, but tomorrow, when we don't see any light at the end of the tunnel, when the, way, the things that we wanted to turn out a certain way didn't turn out. We courageously live the gospel today, tomorrow, and every day, every into the last breath. My friends, let that wise person be you. Amen. Together we stand, and like the apostles of old, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence and faith, we bring our needs to our loving God. On this day that the Lord has made, let us pray for Holy Mother Church. May the Holy Spirit continue to guide her in holiness and protect her from all evils. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for civic and health care leaders who coordinate responses to the pandemic that we are living through. May God give them wisdom, strength, safety, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those nearing death and for the sick in our parish. May Christ fill their souls with his peace and lead them to seek his mercy and fairness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for members of this faith community called St. Matthew's. May God graciously help us use our time, our talent, our resources for the sake of his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a healing to our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the, the faithful departed. May the risen Christ welcome them into the great wedding feast of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the repose of the soul of Christa Francello, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us have the courage to lift up to God, our merciful and loving Father, all the intentions held deep within our hearts. Father, if it brings you glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of love and mercy, you are our help. Trusting in your compassion, we ask you to hear our petitions. and We offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus. 
Jesus. My Savior, for there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us see. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Yes, the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that he might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in Ah, yes. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your devil and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself and Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Matthew, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, remembering in a special way those whose names are gathered here on the altar during this month of all souls, 
those who are commemorated in our picture, who have died this past year in a special way, for Krista Francillo, for whom this Mass is being offered, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time, for those of you that are at home, recite with me the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, please come to me spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. my light, my help, my salvation. Why should I fear? With God I fear no one. God protects me all my life. With the Lord, what should I dread? The Lord is my light, the Lord salvation. There is one thing I ask of the Lord that I long for, all of my days with God to be dwelling, gazing with awe at the beauty of God and in wonder on God's house. The Lord is my light, the Lord is my help, the Lord is my salvation. I know I will live to see the Lord's goodness. Now in this life I assure Trust in the Lord, be strong and be brave, wait in hope for God our salvation. The Lord is my light, the Lord is my help, the Lord is my salvation. Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise and I shall rise with you. Be now my vision, open these eyes, showing me see. Onward to the kingdom, you are the way. Arise in me and I shall rise with you. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise, and I shall rise with you. Be now my footsteps, leading the way, taking me where I must go. Onward to the kingdom, you are the way. Arise in me, and I shall rise with you. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise, and I shall rise with you. You know my heart and you know my ways. You who formed me in my mother's womb. thrives in you. Christ in me, arise and 
dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise. Christ in me, arise. Christ in me, arise. And I shall rise with you. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the outpouring, sorry, by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, a lot of things uh, going on uh, at the parish. You can find out about them by going to our parish bulletin, our parish website, my parish app, uh, Facebook. Uh, speaking of uh, Facebook, those of you joining us through Facebook Live, I'm looking at you through a little uh, phone. And um, I'd like to be looking at you through uh, a camera. And the camera would be mounted up there and another one up there. And we'd have uh, really cool equipment, which actually we've already, already purchased. And uh, what I understand is that we have half of the funding already. So if you want to contribute to that, we'd appreciate uh, your uh, making allowances for that. So uh, I've been meaning to give that plug for weeks now. I just keep forgetting. So, uh, so thank you for your great stewardship. Uh, well, I know we're not passing the baskets yet. Uh, we probably won't get around to passing the baskets for quite a while. Somebody recommended to me, Father, you should get one of those baskets with the long pole. <laughs> Problem with that is then I need uh -huh. more volunteers to pass that along and use that pole and so forth. So. Uh, there's, there's, yeah, yeah, so, anyhow, we, uh, I'm so glad that you are here, uh, and, uh, those concert. of you, yeah, I'm or sorry. Concert, remember you plugged the concert. What am I plugging? The concert. The concert, well, the concert's in two weeks, yeah. yeah that's right there. Two weeks from now, you know, it's, the season, as I mentioned during Mass, the season of praying for all souls, but November also brings to mind uh, Thanksgiving, uh, which is the week of the 23rd of uh, November. On the 22nd, which is a Sunday, that's the concert that uh, Father Victor is going to have. Father Victor occasionally will have this Mass. He won't have it that Sunday, but he'll have the concert at 3 o'clock. Why? Well, Father Victor, when he was ordained around the same time I was ordained, was considered a late vocation. Uh, even though he's actually uh, a lifer. When he entered the seminary, he did so as a high school student. But like many high school kids, he didn't know what he wanted to do. And God didn't reveal for him that it was his destiny to be a priest. So he, he left formation, and he ended up getting married and uh, had a wonderful life and wife. And Sadly, his wife died of breast cancer. And he ended up being a widower, and he raised his daughter, as a widower, his daughter Lynn, who uh, was doing very, very well as a graduate student over at USF when she uh, contracted, I believe it was leukemia. Uh, and so the endeavors that she was doing as a student in the mental health field, God knows we need good mental health. Uh, so he has a passion to, uh, to have a a scholarship program for other students who have that same kind of, uh, of uh, passion that his daughter had and skills for that kind of field. So he wants to build a foundation and to provide that scholarship program in, in, in honor of his daughter. So, uh, so that's the, the, the story in brief uh, of, of Father Victor and what's going to be happening here in two weeks. So we want to 
provide that opportunity and and uh, it's a great thing. It's a free concert, but there'll be a love offering. And his brother, who is a professional musician uh, up in New York, is going to come down and be basically the main cog in the wheel. Because uh, as Father Victor says, uh, he's just, you know, uh, an amateur musician, whereas his brother is the professional. So, uh, But anyhow, you'll get more of the story, I'm sure, the day of the concert. And, uh, and it's, it's a great... Uh, it's a great way to give back. Amen? Amen? So in the spirit of thanksgiving, we give thanks to God by doing what? Giving to others when we find and discover when we do that, uh, that everyone uh, benefits. A um, little word about the, the, the election, I suppose. A brief word. Thank God the election's over. Um, and uh, for those, uh, you know, uh, you know it, the, the last time we had a Catholic president was uh, the year I was born. And uh, say what you want about JFK, he was no saint, right? And he would admit that. But that's our goal as Catholics, right? To be saints to strive towards sainthood. So my prayer for uh, President-elect Biden is that he does that. He strives for holiness and that he uses, you know, his Catholic faith. He already did last night in, in the speech that he made. Uh, he quoted a song that we all know on Eagle's Wings uh, in uh, his uh, address. And so, so we pray for... Um, uh, President Trump and President-elect Biden and for a smooth transition and however it goes and for peace uh, as uh, uh, Deacon Tony said uh, for the, the turmoil and the challenge that is the, still the reality in, in our country because there's a lot of work uh, to be done but maybe the grace of God can, can uh, continue to intercede for us. Uh, remember, in the, we believe in a biblical religion, right? And a biblical religion is God is the initiator. You know, the world tells us that it's us seeking God. Well, not really. God is seeking us. We are the wayward ones. We are the lost ones. And uh, over and over again, our salvation history shows that. So God is seeking, uh, searching us out. And so we give thanks to God for this truth of our sacred scriptures. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying God by joyfully living the gospel. Thanks be to God. Stay awake. Be ready. When the little come and the moon is on and I awake, be ready. The Lord is coming soon. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is coming soon. Be ready. You do not believe. The Lord is coming. Stay awake. Be ready. The Lord is coming soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is coming soon. Coming soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.